All right, I'm back for the episode of this week in charts via Carnivore Trades and Wall Street for Main Street. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, come find Jason on Patreon, come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get it to it this week. So markets here today, second week in a row that we closed pretty much where we opened, right? So two dojis in a row, lots of chop. Uh, it was a quarterly options X for the month of March. So um, that is to be expected. Lots of pinning, lots of whipsaw, and really ultimately market not really going anywhere. However, a couple of things that were interesting this week. We did finally, I would say decisively, uh, break through this uh, rising wedge pattern. So we are now below this and um, we closed below Thursday and today, Friday, we closed below yesterday's low, you know, essentially confirming that breakdown. Um, you can argue that this trend line is less relevant because we've traded through it so many times. Um, it's not as clean. But what it does represent is that momentum is declining, right? So if we still had momentum, we wouldn't be trading below it, right? So definitely showing a little bit of stalling out here. And what was the cause of that this week? interest rates and inflation data. So CPI came in on Tuesday and that was at about uh, 3.2 versus 3.1 expected. So not really enough to uh, spook the markets. Markets actually rallied. So you saw some hedges coming off on Tuesday, hedges that were there uh, for maybe a hot print. But what really did it was the PPI. So producer price index, it wasn't so much the month over month number. It was the year over year, coming in at 1.6 versus 1.1 expected. That's a huge beat. Um, it's not, you know, 0.1 is nothing, 0.5, that's a lot, year over year. And uh, PPI does lead CPI typically by two, three months. Um, so we are seeing signs of inflation coming back. Additionally, we talked about this last week, but the jobs number, right? The jobs number last Friday was showing potentially a weakening economy, right? They keep revising that number down. Well, if the economy is weakening while inflation is rising, that means stagflation, and that is no good. That's not a situation the Fed can easily bail us out of, and that is a risk that's coming into play for the markets here as we get into, by the way, FOMC, which is next week. Um, personally, I'm starting to get some sell signals coming in um, on the weekly time frame. Take that for, for however you want. That's just some proprietary signals that I have. Um, and it does look at the market's tired, right? I mean, we, we're up 25% since November, five months. Um, I think, you know, we all know that a correction is uh, is reasonable, right? And additionally, you know, it feels like we keep uh, getting these dip buys and it feels like we're going higher. But really um, today, as per the close, we're lower than where we closed on March 1st. And it's even worse on the queues. We are uh, lower then uh, we're also almost very close to the uh, opening price there on March 1st. And if it wasn't for the NVIDIA earnings, uh, which gave us this big gap up right here, which that's the candle that coincides on the queues, you know, the queues probably be down uh, close to the, um, the gap here on February 21st. So we've really gone nowhere, right? Look at the NASDAQ. Everybody's talking about, oh, the NASDAQ's so strong, you know, MAG7, semiconductors, but the queues are, they have gone nowhere for the last three, four weeks. So Definitely momentum declining. And uh, I do think that we are getting close here to a uh, pullback or correction. I don't think, um, you know, there's going to be people talking about crashes and all that stuff. I don't think we're going to do anything like that. But this market is is overdone. It's tired. Uh, and it needs to it needs to pull back and digest these gains. By the way, speaking of tired, uh, look at Adobe. They had earnings yesterday. Took a pretty good hit down about 14%. And that did bring down the IGV. Uh, we'll talk about that. Actually, we can, we can talk about it right now. Uh, we had that outside move earlier this week. We were talking about this wedge here. And it failed to uh, to sustain above that and actually close below. So IGV definitely slipping here. SMH now has a lower low, uh, excuse me, a lower low here with the lower high. Still holding the moving averages. But again, a lot of these high flyers are definitely starting to look uh, on the tired side. So again, definitely in caution mode here. Probably a time for harvesting gains, maybe putting on hedges. Uh, rather than getting aggressive. It's been a good run, but, um, you know, I, I do believe we're getting close 
to some type of a pullback here in the market. So again, right now, still, uh, Spider's still okay. We're above the 20 moving average. 50, 60 is the big line in the sand there on the daily. For the triple Qs, we are at the line in the sand right now, right about three, uh, 433.75. A close below that would be a big negative for the triple Qs. Uh, Russell 2000 this week did pull back pretty sharply and it got hit really hard yesterday on that PPI number. Remember, the uh, obviously rates are going to affect small caps much more so, especially if their uh, rates are spiking very quickly. So IWM pulling back. Again, I still think the weekly on this is okay. And, you know, if this just consolidates, it can move higher in due time, but it definitely uh, took a pretty good hit this week. Dow via the DIA. Again, kind of like IGV, tried to break above this little trend line, little kind of mini flag pattern. And then we uh, reversed back below that. 385 is your line in the sand there. There's the 50 moving average. If we break below that, we have some support at 380 and then uh, 378. So those are the levels there on the DIA. If it recovers, it can go to 395 and then 400. Uh, we talked about semis and cloud already. Uh, Dow Transports took a pretty good hit the last couple of days. Did not close below this trend line here. And you can make a case you've got a head and shoulder here, but it's not triggered yet. Um, even if it does, you still got the 200 and 100 moving average right below price. Additionally, the weekly chart here is still well inside of this big green bar. So price action for the transports is still okay. I know there's a lot of negative press right now with Boeing and some of the other uh, airliners. But Jets backed off a little bit, but it held up okay into the end of the week. I don't see anything terrible here yet for the airliners, but um, you know, definitely, definitely not good uh, press going on. But you know, and transports backing off, but nothing really terrible just yet uh, on the DJT. All right, so uh, let's get over to rates. So we talked about, again, obviously, the inflation data. And if we get over here, there we go. So there's our daily chart. Uh, Two-year, you can see here, up every day this week. So closing back above 4.71, 4.70 area. We get above these pivots here at 4.75. It, yeah. I know the market's not moving that, you know, they're not moving that June rate cut uh, expectation. Uh, it only went down from 60 to 58%. If this breaks out and goes towards five, it's it, the Fed's not going to be able to cut um, unless it comes down really quickly after that. Because if they cut 25 basis points, you're going to be at par with the Fed funds uh, with the two year. If they cut 50, they're going to be below, which they can't do. So right now, um, and a little resistance. If it consolidates, it can go higher, though. I'd watch 5%. Uh, Five-year, again, hammering on the highs. Same with the 10s and 30s. A little bit of resistance here. It needs to consolidate, but uh, I still think rates are... Path of least resistance is up. XHB just continues to, to be strong. It backed off on Thursday. It was up again today. Um, weekly chart, maybe a little tired here. But still trend is up. And that's still been a leading sector. BNQ did back off the last couple of days. Actually, it was down every day this week. But the bigger time frame weekly, again, is still fine. I don't really have any problems with that right now. XLF still strong. Um, I think this is okay as long as it's above 40. Below 40 would be a little problematic. Not terrible, but uh, could indicate that it's doing some backing and filling. KRE is the one I have an issue with. So again, we broke that green bar. And now you've got a red that close below the screen on the weekly and you have a inside bar bear pattern. So I would say KRE is vulnerable here. KBE, large bank ETF, is in much better shape. Yes, you have the red, but it's inside of the bigger green. It's been sideways for a while. So nothing terrible yet. Broker dealers uh, still holding up. They're overbought, but they're still okay. Oil, oil, oil. So oil, I told you guys last week that this could break out Maybe it's late, like maybe late this week, or it needs maybe another week of consolidation, and we are. So we got to my target finally. Taking, I mean, I've been talking about this since January, but 81.50 we got there, and uh, we paused on Friday. Um, if this just consolidates a little bit more, it'll go into the mid 80s. Oil's acting well, um, and that's putting pressure on yields. Upward pressure. XLE got to 91.50, 92. That's been my target. It is a little overbought. It needs to pull back. Same thing with the XOP. Into a little bit, little bit of resistance, an inch higher to 150. And OIH, my favorite, you guys know, which I still own, 
was up nicely. That can still get to 330, but after that, it probably needs to pull back and consolidate. Uh, CCJ backed off again this week after that big reversal Friday. It did hold the 200 moving average. Um, if it breaks that, I think there's a lot of daily chart support at 37.50, and that could be a tradable bounce. So we'll see what we get there with that one. I'm impressed with URNM because we saved that weekly green bar low today on Friday. So you got a tail candle there on the weekly and the URNJ. So again, rotation inside of the sector. I'm going to keep saying it. It's not bearish. So good, good to see that for uranium. And um, those miners are still holding up. Um, that gas continued down. So a rejection at two, essentially. It can, I mean, there's still room for a higher low here, but I'm in the camp. This probably needs to spike that low, which, I mean, talking about getting attractive. I mean, this is the all-time lows. I, I think it doesn't even go back this far, but it's like 98 cents or something like that back in like 1993. So pretty amazing to think about nat gas being this low, but um, that's kind of just what I'm, what I'm seeing right now. Uh, it would get very attractive though if we did spike that low um, below $1.50. Dollar index finally got a bid that needed to do that. Good move on Thursday with uh, yields going up. 103.50 is short-term resistance. 104 is your next level. Below this pivot would be problematic, but I think it's gonna continue to bounce a little bit more. Um, gold, nothing doing this week. It had a big thrust though, right? You had three, six, nine, uh, well, eight and then nine green days, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Eight days in a row where you made not only higher highs, but higher closing highs every day consecutively. Big move impulsive, but, you know, needs to digest that. If it loses 2150, it's down to 21 and then 2075. Those are very good levels of support. I believe GDX can be bought on dips, as can SIL, SILJ, and um, the miners. Silver was also very strong, starting to catch up. There's going to be resistance with this red. So don't chase it up here. Let it give you a pullback or consolidation. But um, it's very strong this week. Platinum also holding up nicely this week. Testing three, uh, excuse, 960. Did pull back off the highs. And palladium almost got to our target there. Uh, but it is inching higher. So nothing really wrong with that. Big star in the metal space and commodity space was copper. I did not think we were going to break out this quickly, this this uh, hard and copper. I will admit that. <laughs> no way uh, did I think that. So big move. I mean, you're talking three, what? Last week, we closed at 388 up to 412. That's a big move for copper. So big pop above that trend line. There is some resistance up here, so it, it may need to stall out, but really nice move. Definitely impressed with copper. So it is acting well. Uh, Bitcoin still holding up. It did pull back a little bit today and yesterday. Still holding the 20 moving average. The only thing I'm going to tell you to watch for is Sunday night, weekly close. Here's your, this would be the only red flag to me. So your previous all-time high was 69.080, spot 7. If we were to close below that Sunday night, that would be like a red flag. Like it's not saying that we're going to like collapse or anything. But if it's strong and it's on breakout, it should be able to close above the all-time high on a weekly. So if it doesn't, maybe it's getting tired. I mean, it is parabolic on the weekly, but that's really all I'm watching right now. And uh, you know, until this does chart damage, it's still in a nice uptrend. All right. So again, uh, spiders markets again um, looking really tired. We have FOMC next week. Um, we also have an Nvidia AI day. I don't know. Maybe that can save the market again. Uh, but market does look pretty tired here to me. And um, We've had a really strong run. Again, support really hasn't uh, been an issue. We haven't really broken support. Uh, to me, the big line in the sand would be about 50, 60, 50, 55 on the SPX. If that breaks, I think we're in corrective mode. Um, again, there's still a chance for bulls to, to repair this. But that wedge here, I mean, you can clearly see momentum is declining. Um, and it goes perfectly hand in hand with that RSI there. So definitely think that uh, we're closer to a, a period where you want to be harvest engaged and in gains and hedging uh, versus being aggressive at this point. So anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. 
Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com. I will see you guys all next week.